Hey guys, James here and want to talk to you about Postgres database. If you've been looking at job postings recently, you may have seen a lot of them are now looking for Postgres experience. And that's because a lot of tech companies are moving to Postgres or starting out a new stack with Postgres at its core. And why is that? And why are the likes of some tech giants like TripAdvisor, Reddit, and Instagram all on Postgres? Well, Postgres is kind of like Python. You can do anything with it. And a lot of the reasons for that is because it's open source and it's had a very dedicated, very hardworking community that has basically given it a huge range of flexibility as well as a lot of solid performance features. So in this video, I'm gonna go into a lot of those reasons and a lot of the general knowledge you should have about Postgres and why you might wanna consider it for your main stack or maybe just your side project. And then in future videos, we'll do some how-tos and we'll look at how to set up a Postgres database, how to uh, insert some data and how to really take advantage of some of those unique features. So first of all, why is Postgres so popular? Is it popular? Well, it's certainly not the number one trend on Google search trends. If you look at the comparison to other SQL database types, it still doesn't quite have the volume of them. But what you can see is that the trend for MySQL, SQL Server, and Oracle database is all tending to go down in the last five years. Whereas with Postgres, you see basically a slight uptick. And at very least, you could probably argue that that is a uh, even curve. But anecdotally, I think that there is no doubt that Postgres is on the rise. I work at a Fortune 500 company, and in my department, our application databases are in the process of being switched from, post, from uh, DB2 and uh, IBM's DB2 and Oracle databases all to Postgres. So why is Postgres so popular, and why is everyone trying to use it in their tech stack and switching to it? Well, we'll go into a lot of those reasons right now. The number one reason I find is the power of open source. Postgres has a ton of very dedicated developers who have made some awesome tools that are for developers by developers, but they're all open source and they're all free. Because of that, there's things like PSQL, which is a really easy command line tool to load up data and do other kinds of manipulations with just the command line. There's also PG Admin, which is a GUI interface which comes with SQL, which you can instantly, comes with Postgres, you can instantly, as soon as you have Postgres installed, you can start making tables and you can start querying with a very nice admin interface specifically made for Postgres. And then additionally, you have these endless plugin libraries. So any language you can think of has a probably a solid plugin for Postgres. And my favorite is obviously Psycho PG2 for Python. Uh, this works really well. It can integrate with Django, can integrate with Flask, and it's a very easy, you don't have to worry about drivers or anything else like that besides the Postgres drivers, and you can instantly connect to a uh, remote database. And then, of course, the overall idea of the open source is there's no licensing fuss. So a lot of times when you have Oracle, when you have IBM's DB2, you absolutely need to pay for the licenses to use those. And even MySQL, which was kind of the classic open source data database, has been bought by Oracle. And so you're going to want to make sure that you stick to the or to the you know community free edition of MySQL if it's really important to you to uh, to not have any fees or charges. On the other hand, with Postgres, there's no worry about having to upgrade to a paid version. If you're a startup and you want to get going right away and you want to be clear that the use of your SQL database will not cost you any money. There's only one choice and that's Postgres. Another reason people really like Postgres is the premium performance. Now I'm not gonna claim that Postgres is the best performing fastest database in the world. It's certainly not, but they have built in a lot of features that make it A, performant uh, under a lot of circumstances and B, very useful in production applications. So one of the things that makes it performant overall is this multi-version concurrency control or MVCC. So this basically allows you to do parallelization in your queries uh, and take advantage of multiple cores on the machine that's uh, hosting your database. So obviously parallel, if you can take advantage of it, can really, really speed things up. Um, and that's an advantage that Postgres has that something like MySQL does not. 
Additionally, you have a lot of features that really help you when you have a Postgres for database running in production. One of those is non-blocking indexes. So basically what you can have is you can create or update an index while Postgres is in production and being written to, being read from, without screwing up any of those operations. And with a lot of other databases, you basically have to freeze your database, take it offline, and stop all write applications before you can update it with an index. Whereas with Postgres, if you wanna get that performance going, you're live in production, you can just send it, you can just basically send the new index update and it'll perform it there while being able to also perform the right applications of your customers, whether they're creating new accounts or whatever they're doing that is gonna be updating your data. Uh, and finally, you have partial indexes. So basically you have, and we'll get into indexes later, but you have a lot of great options for excellent indexes and uh, partial indexes is a good example of these. Basically, if you want to make sure that uh, people in certain circumstances get extremely good perform uh, performance. So for example, if you have a customer key of zero, which means like an unknown visitor, and you always want them to have, you always wanna be able to look them up with lightning fast performance, a partial index can basically index on just a subset of their records in whatever column you're indexing on. And that makes it very performant and very useful in certain production applications. Another excellent thing about Postgres is all the data types. Basically, people who have had different needs for different data types in Postgres have made sure those features are available. And as it's matured and matured, those features are available for everyone for free. So if you're looking to do any kind of storage, there's a good chance that Postgres is going to have the data types that you need. So they have Boolean, they have large objects, aka blob storage. Um, so I've worked on a project where we actually stored CSV files. We transmitted the CSV files to bytes and then we stored them in our data set, in our database so that we could pull them down later and do some validation of like a machine learning model. Uh, they have key value stores, they have money values, they have ranges. So with these ranges you could store for example a very specific time range and if you're looking to have some non-blocking time ranges some non-overlapping time ranges with something say a uh, a, uh, a direct uh, acyclic graph where you want to have processes that don't, don't overlap each other that would be a good instance for those you have json b with his json binary uh, what the JSONB does in particularly well is it obviously stores JSON, which is one of the reasons a lot of people love Postgres and I do myself as well. But with the binary, it also lets you create indexes inside the JSON. So if you have a key, you know, a key value store, or if you have an array and you want to be able to index certain values in there, you can do that as well, which is just a really, really, really neat feature and um, uh, kind of space age compared to a lot of the other databases and what they're capable of doing. Um, additionally, you have things like arrays, IP addresses, CIDR blocks, just a lot of very, very helpful data types where you could actually get, instead of having to transform these things into something kind of basic, with Postgres, a lot of times they have something that's very specifically tailored towards your needs. So another reason is all the indexes. There's a lot of great indexes in Postgres and we'll get into some of those in the later videos. But for now, we'll just list them out here. We have the standard binary tree. We have gin, we have gist, brin, hash, and my favorite, which is the gin trigram data set, which basically will give you a great performance on full text search and on uh, character value search. So basically, if you're creating any kind of website and you want people to be able to search for things by name or by a partial word, this is your index. Uh, I've used it myself. It has really improved my website. And I was scared because I thought I was going to have to do something like Elasticsearch and get all this, you know, maybe have to pay for it and have to learn a lot about Elasticsearch. But no, this sped it up and got me exactly the performance that I needed. So very, very cool stuff with the indexing capabilities of Postgres. Also, all the extensions. There's so many great extensions in Postgres. We have cron jobs. If you want to schedule jobs and you, you just want to update the database, you can do that right in Postgres. You don't necessarily have to use something like Celery with Celery Beat, which is a, a lot of configuration to use in Python um, or whatever your cron provider is. It's really nice that they have this option in Postgres that you could just set it up right there. 
Um, they also have stored procedures, which also have capabilities of triggering events. So if you update a database and it has this value, then trigger this event to go update this other data table there. Um, and what's really nice, obviously, is that if you have a web application and you want to be able to maybe update some metadata when users perform some sort of action, you can do this without having to have all that metadata update uh, in the actual response code so that that way your users aren't waiting around for you to perform all those updates before they get their response back. Um, so really cool stuff there. Um, and then there's also some more fun things like fuzzy matching, you know, fuzzy string match just built right into your database. There's pivot tables that you can create with a table funk, um, table funk uh, extension. Uh, and then probably the most important Postgres extension is the PG stat statements. This will basically give you a look at all the different um, where clauses and having clauses that have been in your queries. So you can look at what's commonly used as a filter and where you need to really focus for your indexes and where you need to speed up performance. And then also uh, GIS, uh, Postgres is really well built out with GIS. So if you want to use this for a lot of the global positioning um, type of uh, work, it's perfect for that. So that's overall a lot of excellent reasons to get into Postgres. I think that uh, basically covers m most of the main reasons why it's so popular. And it's why I've chosen to do a little video series on getting up and running with Postgres and taking advantage of the many features. So I hope you'll stick around. I hope you'll watch some of the future videos. And if so, I'll see you in those. Thank you.